Hello everyone, and welcome or welcome back. In this tutorial, we will talk about events, and types of events in Scratch. Also, we will show you how events can affect your project, and how you can play with them, and make them fit for your project. So, without wasting our precious time, let's get started. Understanding Events Just like events within the world, Scratch events can happen at any time. But the good news is that you can control the events in Scratch, unlike real-world events. For instance, if you set the one green flag click block on top of another block, the block will start only if you click the green flag. If nobody clicks the green flag, then it never happens. All events in Scratch are like this, you need to do something to make the event happen. You've already learned about blocks that are mostly rectangular with a touch bump at the start and oval-shaped blocks. Now take a glance at some yellow colored blocks known as events blocks. You should notice there are some blocks that look a touch different. These special shaped blocks are called hat blocks and they're the ones that permit you to begin your events. If you set blocks of code into the workspace without a hat block, the only way those blocks will ever do anything is if you click on them. Otherwise the blocks are going to just sit there and do nothing. You utilize these hat blocks to get everything started at the proper time. The events blocks in Scratch all start with when. When one among these items happens in Scratch, your events block will begin to run your code blocks to form your sprite do what you would like. There are two different categories of events that happen in Scratch. One sort of event comes from the outside someone telling your project what to do. Like if someone is playing your project and the player presses the up arrow key to make a sprite jump. The other form of event, called an inside event, is one that you simply create. The when backdrop switches to underscore event is the best example for this. This event is caused by other blocks inside your project switching the backdrop indirectly by the player. Outside events. How does one get a computer to do different things? The four most common ways are from the mouse or the keyboard. You move the mouse around and click on things, otherwise you press keys on the keyboard. In Scratch, you can connect blocks to do things when someone presses a particular key or clicks something with the mouse. These are called outside events. There are a couple of types of outside events in Scratch that you simply can use, just like the when green flag clicked an events block. Here are all the various things that can happen to start outside events. The green flag is clicked. A particular key is pressed. A sprite is clicked. A timer reaches a particular number of seconds since you press the green flag, or the sound from the microphone is above a particular level. When using video, the quantity of motion on the camera is above a particular level. This one may be a little more advanced than the rest. You can probably discover how a lot of these work just by reading them. The when green flag clicked block will start any blocks beneath it once you press the green flag. Inside events. Outside events are not the only way of creating events. If you want an event to happen at a certain time, you can do that, not just when the person playing the game presses a button. Using blocks, you can make these events happen, and these are called inside events. The best way to understand an inside event is to examine why you'd need one within the first place. Imagine you have got two sprites on your stage. They each have their own blocks, which will make them do things, but they don't know what the other sprite is going to do. If you would like them to do something at a similar time, you have got two choices. Number one, you can add timing to make them do things just at the proper time. Number two, to perform something, you can create an inside event, so sprites tell each other to do something. There are two hat blocks for inside events, namely when backdrop switches to underscore and when I receive underscore. The when backdrop switches to underscore block does the same action it says. If you modify the backdrop with the switch backdrop to underscore looks block, then any blocks connected to the when backdrop switches underscore block will begin to play. A bit like the when backdrop switches to underscore block waits for the switch backdrop to underscore looks block to play before doing anything, the when I receive underscore block waits for the broadcast underscore or broadcast underscore and wait blocks before it does anything. These blocks send and receive messages this message is simply the name of the event. You can structure whatever name you would like for it. An events message isn't identical to the say underscore or think underscore blocks, which show a unique kind of message. You can't see event messages on the stage. 
they're sent from one sprite to a different one, to inform it to do something. These blocks also assist you create new messages. If you click on the drop-down menu in any of those blocks, you'll see an option for new message. You can name your message, whatever you would like. Get creative. Now that you know how to create a message, let's find out how you'll use them. Timing things with messages. Where messages really help is, once you have two sprites talking to each other. You don't want to have to hit a key, or click a button, every time you would like to get to the next part. Instead you can make it, so one sprite knows when the opposite one is talking to it. Broadcast and wait. You might have noticed a second block, that appears a lot just like the broadcast underscore block. This is the broadcast underscore wait block. Any blocks you've got after this block won't start until everything that received the message finishes all of their blocks. This can sometimes make things a touch simpler if the blocks you've got don't need to keep going while something else is going on. Take Andy and Anina for instance. Andy's second set of blocks don't start until after Anina finishes her job. Rather than sending and receiving a new message after Anina is completed, you could just use the broadcast finished asking to dance and wait block and Put the say thanks for two seconds block right after it. Now Anina doesn't need to tell Andy that she has finished dancing. Since Andy is waiting until she is completed, so we can remove the broadcast block from her code. Parallel events. Sometimes you can have one event, like clicking the green flag, and start more than one script. This is often possible using parallel events or two things happening at an equivalent time. For instance, take a glance at the following two scripts. If they're both for an equivalent sprite, once you click on that sprite, it will say the three speech bubbles and, at an equivalent time, it will be dancing. Try to not confuse messages together with your sprite speech bubbles. The say and think blocks, found in let's blocks, make your sprite show bubbles in the air. Events are never shown on the stage in any respect, so you'll never actually see these messages. Well that's all we have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.